good morning. It is Monday, August 15th. Holy, we're halfway through August already. I can't believe it. Anyway, it's Monday morning, August 15th, in the middle of the dog days of summer, and it's so good to see you this morning. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of Iliopolis and Nyanic Christian Churches in Iliopolis and Nyanic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries. This is an outreach for those who are spiritual but not religious or who are faith-based but don't have a church community. I'm the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast where we encourage people to lean into the difficult and uncomfortable situations in life so that you can overcome them. All that said, I am here today and I'm very excited. Um, can't wait to tell you what I've got going this week, but before I do that, I just want to welcome you. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. I know I did. We got together with my husband's side of the family up on the farm, and we hadn't had all of the people together in before at a reunion, and it was fantastic to see everyone there. There were a couple people missing, and we really missed them, but overall, the day was just fantastic. The weather cooperated. It was a beautiful day. Nobody was hurt. The food was delicious. There were tractor rides and four-wheeler rides. It was just a fantastic day. So I hope you had a good weekend as well. And today I'm just going to get right to it. Wednesday, I am hosting a workshop on anxiety, how to manage your anxiety and to grow resilience. I hear all the time about people and their anxiety, and I know anxiety might be a bit of a buzzword right now, but I don't know that it's incorrect. In the past, we've talked about stress and burdens and different things, and all of it is anxiety, and it can really affect us in profound ways. Medical practices are built upon helping people manage their anxiety. So, in 25 years experience being a pastor. I've been trained in many areas and I've learned a lot of things and I can make a real difference for you with your anxiety. And just to give you an idea, when we do this workshop, I'm going to be drawing on information from Bowen Family Systems Theory from, well, a lot of different sources. I've been trained in a lot of different areas, but more importantly, I've applied them to myself and in my life. I know the difference it can make because I have experienced it myself. And I want to help you and be there with you as you try, as you begin to understand the source of your anxiety, where it comes from, how it shows up in the different patterns in your life and in your family and in your workplaces and all of those things and how you can and prepare yourself to recognize these patterns and to manage them so that you can have some peace, you can have directions, you can stop being afraid of the other shoe that's going to fall, all of those things. And if you follow me on social media, you know that the last two weeks I've been posting about lies that anxiety tells us. I just want to run through those things real quick. I have 10 of them. I'm sure there are more. I picked these 10. Uh, anxiety tells us that we're not good enough, that there's something about ourselves, we're just not good enough. We can look at everybody else and see, oh yeah, obviously they're fine, they're equipped, they can do whatever it is that they're doing, but you know, we're not good enough. Well, that's a lie. That's coming from our anxiety. Number two, that whatever happened in the past will happen again. If we failed in the past, our anxiety tells us it's just going to happen again. Well, if we didn't learn anything and we're doing the same stuff, there's a good probability it will. But when we learn from her past and when we make some tweaks and take action, there's no reason to think that we won't succeed wildly. It's our anxiety that tells us that to keep us protected, to keep us in that comfort zone where we're nice and safe. That's a sermon for a different day. And yes, I mean sermon. So moving on. Number three, ang lies anxiety tells us is that worrying about it brings control over it. Okay. 
A little bit of worry inspires us to action. If we're worried about our health, we're going to eat better, we're going to exercise, we're going to seek out all of those things that improve our health. If we're worried about money, we're going to look at our budgeting, our spending, and our investing. A little bit of worry helps, but don't build a house there. If you stay in that place of worry, you are living in an unrealized future and you're missing all the joys and all the benefits of the present. It's your anxiety that's telling you to keep worrying about it. Number four, another lie anxiety wants you to believe is that your fears are justified. So many people have fears that uh, the worst case scenario is gonna happen, that another shoe is gonna fall, that things are going really well in my life right now, that means something's gonna go bad. No, no, this is anxiety. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Maybe things will continue to be incredibly great for you. It's your anxiety that's telling you that your fears of the future and that all things going wrong are justified. Number five, another lie anxiety tells us is that if you have panic attacks, that means you're weak. No, if you have panic attacks, you know what that means? It means you have anxiety. That's all that means, plain and simple. So stop believing all the lies that your anxiety would tell you. Uh, number six, that's where we are. Anxiety tells us that we're not likable. Stop it already. All of us have things about us that are likable and not only likable, but lovable. Do we also have things that are irritating? Absolutely. But those don't define us. We are likable and lovable people created fearfully and wonderfully by a loving God. It's a lie that your anxiety is telling you. Another one is that you're gonna mess up all the good stuff in your life. That's anxiety. You are capable, you are teachable, and you can learn things. You're not gonna mess things up unless you keep playing that tape and ultimately bring about that destruction yourself. But that's anxiety. So hit the pause button on that. Number eight, another lie anxiety will tell you is that discomfort is bad for you. All right, now here's a real danger. I might launch off into a three hour rant about this. I will do my level best to not do that. But discomfort can mean growth. If you stay in a comfort zone, it's ultimately gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. Think about it this way. Uh, if Think about your arms. Your arms move because there are muscles attached and there are nerves and all those things, but let's just talk about the muscles. Okay, to grow your arms, you would need to work those muscles and it gets uncomfortable to do that. So if you stay comfortable, you're never gonna challenge that muscle and guess what it's gonna do? It's going to grow smaller. It's going to get weaker. The same is true if we try to stay in an emotional comfort zone. If we never challenge it, we're never going to feel uncomfortable, but guess what? That zone is going to grow smaller and smaller and smaller. Soon the things that you used to be comfortable with, you're not going to be so comfortable with anymore. So stop it. Discomfort doesn't necessarily mean bad. If you fall down and you have discomfort, yeah, go seek someone's medical advice on that. That discomfort could be a red flag that you've broken something. But discomfort, when it comes to anxiety, could very well mean that you are growing, that you are learning something, that you are becoming more. So stop it. Discomfort being bad for you? That is a lie that anxiety says. Number nine, we're too fragile to do hard things. Maybe so, but guess how we do hard things? We get uncomfortable, we grow, we overcome them. Can a baby drive a car? Can a toddler plan for a family? Can a child run a multinational organization or be an entrepreneur? No, 
we learn all of those things. It gets uncomfortable. We are not too fragile. We can take the next step in front of us. Now, if I look at, at a, I don't know, a, performing an instrument, performing, um, playing an instrument at a very high level. Okay, that seems too big for me. But what I can do is I can get an instrument and take lessons. I can put in the time. I can put in the practice. So no, we are not too fragile to do hard things. We can take the next step. And you might need support to do that. Find the support to do that. But don't let your anxiety lie to you that you don't have what it takes to do something. And number 10, your anxious thoughts are trustworthy. Your anxiety lies to you. We've been talking about that all morning. So stop believing things that lies to you over and over again. Anxiety is not your friend. Anxiety will tell you things that will limit yourself because here's the deal. Our bodies are lazy. We have limited resources. So our body lives in this scarcity kind of mindset that, uh oh, if I walk over here, Perhaps there's not going to be enough energy to run away from this threat later. So that's just kind of a reptilian brain, brainstem, fight or flight reflex that's built into us. But that's minimal. We also have another layer of brain that has feelings and emotions and where we form habits. And we have the best part of our brains on top of that. The neocortex that can create logical thought and language and ideas and symbols and all of those things. And we can move past fight or flight. So, yeah, anxiety can serve a purpose. It can keep us alive and it can keep us safe. But if we only listen to anxiety, our life is going to wither. So don't trust your anxious thoughts. Some of them, yeah, listen to them. Are they for my survival? Will I not make it past this next moment if I don't listen to my anxiety? 99% of the time, that's not true. So take time and think through things objectively, logically. Detach yourself from the moment and think through them because your anxiety lies to you. So join me Wednesday. And in the comments here, I'm going to post a link that you can register I'm going to post a link where you can join. It's a free workshop. If you show up live, there's going to be a bonus for you for doing that. If you register and you can't show up live, you will get a link to the recording in your inbox. So make sure you do that. Register for this. Show up live. And you're going to walk away with so many benefits and some practical next steps you can do to manage your anxiety and to grow resilience. So that's what I have for you today. Again, my name is Melissa Ebkin, pastor, uh, founder of Light Life and Love Ministries and podcast host. Reach out if you have any questions. You can uh, comment below or you can reach out through Facebook Messenger. I'd be happy to connect and answer any questions you have. Bye for now.